Hi guys, I'm Penny, a medicine woman and vitalist herbalist, specializing in ancient remedies for modern illness. If you'd like to learn more, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always here to help. Welcome to The Real Deal. Real people, real issues, real talk. And today we're talking cannabis with Cheryl Keller, also known as Canna Nana, a longtime cannabis act, act, activist, a patient, caregiver, grower, oil shiner, medicine maker, a mother, grandmother, and one of my dearest, dearest friends. So I'm excited for you all to meet her. And while she's waiting, while we're waiting for her to pop on here, let me see. I'm trying to connect us to my laptop real quick, guys. Let's see here. Okay, I see you on there, Cheryl. Let me see. Okay, I think I got that. says it's adding you, so let's give it a minute to do what it's got to do. Come on, on Facebook, let's do it. Turn this down. Yeah, I think it's going to says it's still adding you, Cheryl. So let's see if it's going to do it. No, it didn't. Let me try it one more time. Be patient with us, guys. We're trying. Okay, so it's adding again. I don't know, girl. Let me see. Try to do whatever you just did, Cheryl, because for some reason that went away again. I don't know what's going on. Stupid thing. So we're definitely going to be getting into um, some solvent issues too with oils today. Let me see. Okay, I'm trying again. Oh, oh yay. It's hello. Working. Hello, hello. How are you? Well, I'm a little upset now because now that it's sideways, my stand isn't going to work. So we have to do some maneuvering. But how are you today, Benny? I'm doing. Good, you maneuver over there. Okay, sorry if I put my fingers in the. I'm doing the same thing, maneuvering because if, if it's upright, I my stand works, but for whatever reason, it does not rotate. So this will have to work. I'll just have to hold it, I guess. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself, Cheryl. I have. Just really, first of all, let me start out with thanking you for creating this platform. We really need to get this information out here because I am an activist and an advocate and a mother and a patient and all these things that you mentioned in the beginning. But I can't do this by myself. We have got to get the message out about this medicine and the power that it has. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, um, you know, so how did you, how, you know, why don't you let everyone know how you kind of got into, um, the medical end of cannabis? 
Uh, well, I, I smoked it. To you personally? I, I smoked it most of my life. I started smoking it relatively young, and I knew, I always knew that it didn't have any harm, but I had no idea of its real power until I was walking around here with a tube of what we now know to call cannabis oil, but at the time it was another name we'll get to later on as we're talking. But um, I was told at that time to put it on a paper when I had a bad pain day and to smoke it and it would help my pain. So I was keeping this tube on there and uh, someone told me that my dog needed to be put down. And you know, all these myths we hear, I was convinced that it would kill my dog peacefully. So I gave it to him, um, and three days later, I had a geriatric dog acting like a teenager, and I thought, well, what have I been doing wrong for all this time? And, and I started Googling and getting involved in groups and researching everything I possibly could to find out more about this oil and the difference between smoking it and taking edibles and all that versus taking this oil. And it made all the difference in the world for me. It gave me my immune system back, um, got me uh, mobile again, you know, gave me mobility back that I didn't have. I was on a bunch of pharmaceuticals. I'm no longer on anything now except for one little tiny one I'm weaning off of, and it's a center. So I consider that a success. So, yeah. I mean, uh, but I I just I had to do a lot of the research myself, and that's why I'm here today. I want to get that message out to people. You may see something like this, but that don't let it end there. Get get out there, do your due diligence, because no one's going to help you with this, except for people that are just like us. We have to help each other. Yeah, and you know, so I guess I'll just bring this up we're going to get into some you know all kinds of different things because we want to kind of clear the air but um just you know in our circle of friends from collaborating um based on the topic of the show we you know like me myself i've always used the word pico when describing cannabis oil and um the reason I did that is because people know cannabis oil as RSO, Rick right. Simpson oil. And, um, you know, Rick Simpson oil, Rick uses, he, you know, he kind of brought light to cannabis oil, you know, um, and into the world. And he used naphtha, um, you know, and he got lucky because obviously, if you look at the MSDS sheets on naphtha, um, it's not something you want to use, but he, you know, he obviously got lucky and we've all done all kinds of things growing throughout the years when it comes to cannabis, because we weren't allowed to have real scientific anything, right. you know, when it comes to that. Um, so, you know, after talking the last few days with everyone, it came out that FICO, we've been using FICO, which stands for full extract cannabis oil we've been you i've been using that term just so people don't associate it with naphtha and then right. there's other um things you can use you know you can use isopropyl um ethanol and then you know we use alcohol because that you know we try to find you know the least harmful um and you know we're going to get into these little solvent issues as as we talk here and you know as the show goes on um but we as you know, our group of friends have come to the agreement that we are, you know, from this day forward, going to call it cannabis oil. Um, because I guess if you Google FICO, um, the procedure and actually doing it is different than actually the procedure that we do when we make our oil, which is the same, you know, Cheryl, I'm going to have you actually kind of go over the procedure of, of medicine making, you know, oil making, um, we can go there, you know, we can come back to it, but I wanted to bring it up and, um, we're going to bounce around a little bit today, guys, because there's so much and we do want to touch on everything. Um, but we're not using, I'm not using the word FICO anymore because, um, 
the stuff that's on the internet right now isn't really in line with what we're doing with the alcohol. So there's more, this is where all the problems are with all the misinformation and different things. So, you know, we're going to kind of say what we're doing and, you know, our opinions in it. And, you know, don't just take it to the bank, but it's a good place to start. I'm going to let you continue. I'm going to let Jude out real quick, but I'll be right back. But go ahead and, you know, continue with that. Uh, well, I think a lot of it um, where we're, we're having the biggest problem is just that there are many different ways to make this medicine and to extract what we need out of it. And the confusion and wars is over what substance is the best and the safest. Well, I'm just going to put it out there right now. The best and safest is heat and no, no solvent. But not all of us can do that or can produce enough of it. So we have to resort to what is safest. So science, science has its place, no doubt. We all rely on it. But we also have to rely on our good old common sense. And here's my rule. If it says any, if it doesn't say somewhere on the bottle that it's for human consumption, I don't want it in my body. But that doesn't mean that you may not have another reason or another person. It depends on what they have, which is where Rick, our, our you know, he dug up this recipe that's been around for as long as people have been. And, and he dug this recipe up and, and used what he had on hand and it went nationwide and then worldwide. And all those people that are using it are really lucky to still be here because they're defeating the whole purpose. Yeah. But then there are the others like the isopropyl. It's, it's, it's very uh, safe compared to naphtha. That's for sure. Right. It only has trace amounts of, of the chemicals in it that we're trying to eliminate. And in a pinch, I would definitely choose that over, you know, ethanol, um, naphtha. Uh, but my choice is always going to be something food grade or, or heat. If you can press it out with heat and get that live resin, that would be ideal. But again, you know, you if you don't have the money for one of those big machines and you're sick, get yourself some um, food grade if you can, and if not, a, a, a solvent with as few chemicals in it as possible and i guess the process is just you know we, we know already you can do a variant there too you can quick shake it soak it and strain it right away if you don't want the chlorophyll and all the other things you can soak it longer to pull everything out so this really isn't set in stone it's it's really about what you want and need for your body so the best thing I, I tell everyone to do is to research what's going on with them first and then go from there because cannabis isn't the, you know, uh, oh, the end all, you know. Right, it's not a cure-all. Right, we need everything in nature working together. And, you know, so anytime we can pull something natural into that and, and, and implement that into our, our routine, it's always better. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of at a loss here. It's my first time live, guys. Just bear with I me. Know. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm in the same spot you are, but, you know, um, you know, and then I do, you know, because I've been really against isopropyl my whole, let me let Judah in real quick. Yes, ma'am. And while you're, I'll, I'll touch on that too. I actually started the first few batches of oil I made. I didn't have access you know, or the money to get the isopropyl or get the food grade stuff. So I started out with using isopropyl, but I used a different grade than you could just go buy in the store. I actually contacted a company called Granger. I don't want to plug them, but they sold one that was 99.9 .9 instead of just 90. So that, that means that it is more pure. And I urge people if they're going to use that, yeah, definitely go for the, the most refined, you know, um, few chemicals as possible as bottom line yeah and you know okay so this is as we've been collaborating this week and, and coming to terms with using cannabis oil moving forward to stop the confusion maybe a little and not putting someone's name on cannabis oil because it's it belongs to no one it belongs to everybody um so you know it's cannabis oil um, 
But okay, so if, if you are using isopropyl, this is how it was explained to me. So, um, and I've used it in the past too. Like, you know, like I was saying earlier, we've done all kinds of things through the years learning. Right. Um, because, you know, we haven't been given with it being illegal or, you know, halfway legal. Like, you know, our hands are tied as far as like getting to really test this thing. Yeah. Everything is from experience and collaborating with each other. That's how we've learned. Um, so, you know, now we're, you know, the clinical triers are there, but they're not in the U.S. So, you know, to me, they're just as good. I mean, I don't care if they're the clinical trials from Israel or Spain or whatever. They're there just because our government wants to hide them or whatever. It doesn't matter. They've been done. There's more research done on cannabis, the cannabis plant than any, than all the pharmaceutical drugs put together. So, that that like, convenience you know, of having it scheduled so that it's not usable. Yeah. 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 So going back to isopropyl, um, if you drink a pop, if you drink a Pepsi, you're going to get 500 parts per million of isopropyl in a Pepsi. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is how a lot of people look at it. If you, and, and you know, they're getting the oil tested and it has one part per million of isopropyl. So yeah, if, you look at it that way if you're drinking pop and you you know compare the oil with the isopropyl to a pop no it's not as bad as that you know but like me and cheryl we like to do the best you know like we we you know we we like to keep growing and and you know cut out anything harmful where possible that's why we learn lean towards that you know now now that and and it's actually cheaper too you know so so it's easier to find, you know, there's a few other things that there, there's a couple good perks about it, you know, and now that we're talking about this with everyone, who knows, maybe the people that use isopropyl might even want to switch once, you know, it, it, it just takes us talking and that's why we're doing the show because I mean, we've all been doing this for 30 years and now, you know, in a couple of days we said, let's call it cannabis oil, you know, and hope Hopefully it catches on, you know, that way we can quit all the misconceptions and, you know, maybe start gearing towards one work. Uh, well, you just, uh, I don't mean to interrupt, but you just made me think of something that we really haven't talked about, but it's important. And, and I don't want to lose this train of thought about the Pepsi. Okay. Yeah. Um, that, that right there is a huge example of, of the experience acceptance we have for the things we love and you know whatever but bottom line is none of this stuff that we're talking about today is going to work for any kind of long term on anyone if we don't learn that we have to give up all that stuff the sugar is what feeds that cancer you know yeah. the so it, it's a package deal you have it's a lifestyle change you have to decide you want to live and you don't you can't go to somebody and say help me because the, the way things are you've got to help yourself you got to learn to do it for yourself because this is not something that you're going to stop once you feel better yeah yeah you I have mean, to do it for you, life. you know like we're not out here healing people we're we're teaching you to fish you know uh, Amen. Not, you know, yeah <laughs> and um you know in that you know like like you said you want to you have to want to live you have to want to put in the effort. You have to want to do the research. You have to want to grow. We can, you know, show you the light, but, you know, after that, the effort's yours. You know, because there's only so many people we can help in a day. Um, you know, doing this, people flood to you. Um, yes. And, you, you and know, it breaks my heart when I see someone go out there and say, I heard about this wonderful thing, but where, where do I know how, where do I get it? Yeah. And then, what they end up doing is they fish out some despicable human who sends them crap and they, they get sicker. Yeah. It doesn't work. Now they can't afford to get the materials that they need. So my primary thing is to, I, I try to teach people how to do it for themselves or at least what to do if you can't, which is to find someone, a trusted friend, the material that you need and have them sit there with you and do it. Because if I can do it, 
and I can't cook anything without burning it. Anybody can make this oil. I, and you know, I just want people to know. You have, that's something that is so important because, you know, cannabis has never killed anyone in the, you know, it's been around 60,000 BCE before, you know, the common era, before the Bible was made. It's been a long, a long time, okay? But, you know, there is even one case where a girl, I don't know the whole story, but someone has died from it now. And I'm sure there's been complications, but it's not from the cannabis plant. It's from the pesticides, the herbicides, the chemicals, um, the processing, mm. the medicine making that's not going on in the right way. Um, whether you go to a dispensary or not, the quality, you know, don't go to a dispensary and think all this stuff's been quality controlled because it has this nice little label because there's corruption in, in that industry too. You know, anytime so, there's you money, know, there's corruption. The right. You can, you can always pay the piper to make a label say well, whatever you want. To say, and you in any of these legal states all you have to do is take notice of what's happening we started as all these dispensaries were medical facilities who had also took recreational on board as a service now they're all giving up their medical license because they're making plenty of money just not having any control or any quality control yeah. pretty much they can do what they want with recreational right and you know i mean the bigger it grows into that machine just like tobacco I mean, I guarantee you, Philip Morris is growing more cannabis right now than anyone. So, but you don't. And I mean, hear about that. what are they spraying on it? Because the FDA approves quite a bit for our food. So, what you know, and that's why it's not easy for everyone to grow. But again, it can be done, and everybody can can sustain. And I recommend everybody do because even things like neem oil. Let's go to that real quick. Hypermesis syndrome. Yeah. What in the heck? All of a sudden, we have a, a, a new thing that only came about when le cannabis was legalized. We weren't seeing about it when it was being used illegally. Right. It no. got legal and everybody started growing and using all this stuff. Well, neem, as we know, is a very good and, and organic substance until you change its consistency into a carcinogen. carcinogen. Right. So they're blaming, and, and I knew this would happen all along. They're blaming, they're looking for reasons to blame the cannabis, but really the element that we're, I'm, I just had this talk with my sons, the element that's messed up here is the humans. Yeah, it is. We can't get on the same page about anything. I know. Alone this plant, you know, I, I mean, when you told mentioned to me about we have to say that it kills because we're not allowed to say that it cures. Right. What yeah. is wrong with us? I mean, and I yeah, you know, I'll just say that now in the video, but like I've been pulled aside by the compliance department for because I've been throwing the word cures out a lot. And um, I'm going to switch it to cannabis kills cancer, um, which I did use for a long time. But like, I think I just got, I'm so sick of having to twist words like it is what it is. But um, it is kind of deceiving because, you know, yes, it does kill cancer cells and kills cancer but it's not like you know you take your 60 day remedy which is you know if you have cancer and you go to a dispensary they're going to say okay you need to take 10 grams of oil you know which is the dosage we've kind of come up with through the years um for 60 days i like to do 90 myself but then that's it you're cured no you're not you always are going to have to do a maintenance dose for the rest of your life well you're always going to have to change your keep your lifestyle changed you're always going to have to watch your diet you're always going to have to watch your activity level and be active your mind your mind is a big part of it um so like this, there's you know i guess it's really not a good word to use cure because um you know you, you got to always move forward and you can't just, you know, just stop what you're doing because it's gone. You know, you always have to be mindful of your vessel, you know. So. Well, and that, that brings another thing up that we're now learning um, that some cancers don't need very much at all. 
Others need it for a lot longer. Right. Some need more THC. Some need CBD. It depends on, that's why I don't do what a lot of people, you know, have, have been pushing since this whole legalization thing, trying to separate it out to make it okay for some people. Yeah. If we separate it out, we're destroying, you know, why not just leave it all there? Leave all the components there. I get well, it. Know. THC has this big, scary buzz. But you know what? Go take an Oxycontin and tell me you don't have a buzz. Yeah. And I was just telling someone the other day, like, I haven't been on pharmaceuticals for a while. But um, the one that they did have me on for a month and a half was Ativan when I was in my 20s and I was on it every four hours for uh, a month and a half. And I don't remember my life. And I was literally on my deathbed, even at that time in my twenties. Um, and, and one day I just remember picking up the pill bottle and throwing it like, why are you giving this to me? But my husband was giving it to me as directed, but you know, like I was a zombie and you know, I was just withering away. Like, I don't know. I went for, I mean, they were giving it to me for a rotor cuff tear. I diagnosed five years later after meeting a football player. So really, they were just drugging me for no reason. They didn't know why they were giving me Ativan. They didn't have a diagnosis even, you know? So like, I mean, I'm not, people think that I, you know, because I haven't been to the doctor personally, but, um, you know, yeah, you need, we do need doctors. You know, we, but you don't, you know, all these pre exams and all this stuff, like you need to get in tune with your own body, you know, because any doctor, like they're not um, miracle workers, like they have a no. bunch of symptoms, diagnoses, they don't get to root causes, they don't know about nutrition. Um, that's why I, you can work with the doctor, but you got to be the boss, your body, your life. They're making money off of you. They're going to throw everything they can at you. I mean, I've been through it. You've been through it. I think everyone we know has been thrown through the medical industry and sucked off of. And I had good Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance for 20 me, years. So me too. They, they, they loved me, you know. Yes, um, they did every test on me they could possibly do. They tried every med on me they could possibly do. And I was getting worse. Yeah. And then and when I found the oil and the dog got better, I was like, I got to try this for myself. So I started just taking it. And within like the first six months, I lost probably 20 pounds without giving up my Coca-Cola or anything yet. But homeostasis was happening and I didn't know it. And right. I now I've actually, because I never really raised my dose. I am the worst person for advocating for myself. I spend yeah. so much time on everybody else. I I forget to take the oil or, you know, but if I increased my dose, I'd be willing to bet that it would taper right back down again. But I started having mobility. I got, I used to be sick more than I was well. I was sick all the time. I had some kind of, now we know it's from autoimmune, but, you know, strep throat, the flu, whatever it was. was I, I was always sick. I haven't been sick. But twice in five years, and I've been taking oil for COVID eight. and everything, right? Yeah, I have never had COVID, and yeah. I have tested for. I have tested for it because I did actually get sick recently, right before Christmas. I finally, I kept telling everybody, I'm going to get sick eventually. We all do. Yeah. When I yeah. do, <laughs> I got it bad, but it wasn't COVID. It was just as my doctor called it, Michiganitis. Yeah. What you it, know, the typical upper, upper respiratory, you know, oh, nothing major. We just have snow. to take care. I thought you were saying sick of the snow symptoms. No, <laughs> no, just basically the, the the thing we all get here, the upper respiratory, and yeah, you know, it's just common. It wasn't the flu. It wasn't anything that I needed antibiotics for, you know, or anything that they felt serious, and actually sent me home just. To telling me to do what I was doing because I'm actually, I've been working with a good, pretty good team of DOs for once. They're all residents, but I'm teaching them that there is more to this too. And not to just jump to that pill because they're, they're taught to go 
for a pill that matches with a diagnosis. It's not even about our body, our health, anything anymore. And you teach them about the endocannabinoid system, I bet, right? I do. And uh, about psilocybin. And, you know, my doctor came in the other day and said, hey, I, I read a study thanks to you. He goes, and boy, I'll tell you what, as soon as I'm out of this program, you're the first person I'm calling. <laughs> He's taking a medication that's making him sicker, ruining his organs, and it's costing him 30000 a year. And he's being forced to make a choice under a contract for ProMedica that he can't even have nicotine. He can't discuss cannabis with his patients unless they bring it up. He can't recommend it. They're under, like, they're grilled like they're in the service. And yeah. they're, they're in violation of their contract and can lose their medical license. And it's such a shame. So he said he's going to call me when he's out of out of this program, and he's going to start using cannabis. So I and you know, and that's that's the huge problem. Like their hands, just like politicians' hands are tied, they're puppets. So are doctors. So our lawyers. He'll come in. He he'll, he still tries to give me, even though he knows. He still will sit, try to suggest things to me for my what I do see them for because I do stay in and go in touch for things like I go for occupational uh, manipulation therapy, which is all touch yeah, and nerves um, and things like that. And of course I use their diagnostics. We have a deal. You can take all the blood you want. And if you can't find anything in my blood, you don't get to scan me. You don't get to give me any radiation, any, you know, anything that's going to cause. And it frustrates the crap out of him. So he always is like, well, how about gabapentin? How about this new cream? It's got gabapentin in it, but you don't have to take it. I said to him, "Do you did they not teach you in medical school that my skin is the biggest organ in my body? So if I don't want it on my liver, I don't want it on my skin. Yeah. I got out of touche at least. And gabapentin, boy, that's the one I hate. I've seen that kill people in a week. Like, And now they're giving it to animals. Like, I know I am just so sick of the, you know, the pill pushers and what they've created with our children. Um, you know, they've created this drug epidemic, you know, pharmaceutical drug epidemic, which heroin, meth, all that stuff, you know, is, is in conjunction with. And cannabis has nothing to do with any of that. Like, it needs to be descheduled. Like, you know, it's just insane yeah. the way they're. Yeah, just like these pills. We were just we were talking about that as well. You take something like like Ativan or right. um, Oxycontin or what is it? I don't even know. I I don't take any of them because they all make me sick. But yeah. um, nor, nor nor what are they called? Nor Norcos. Norcos. Yes. Okay. Um, stuff like that. If you do take it and then stop, that can also kill you. You have to yeah. wean. Cannabis doesn't, I mean, even if you decide to try it and you didn't like it, you, you can just throw it in the trash and not have to worry if it's going to stop your heart. Yeah. I do not understand the fear of a buzz in a, I don't either. a society that's drinking alcohol constantly and taking, I don't understand it because that buzz is, is a, it really a myth. It, when I see it depicted like that in a movie. I mean, I have literally tried to be a test subject and see if I could get high high enough to do the stupid stuff that they say we do. It's not yeah. possible. It's just not possible. No, but you know, I have been with people who might smoke a joint and act retarded. And honestly, like that's just that person. They're literally retarded. You know what I mean? Like some people are just idiots. You know what I mean? And that's gonna come through whether they smoke a joint, drink a beer, whatever they're doing, you know? So like, you know, yeah, I've tried to act stupid too. And it, you know, I, I don't even know how that happens, honestly. I mean, and I get um, it lower tolerance. I understand there's a lot to do with tolerance level, but if my life were on the line, which thank goodness so far it hasn't been, um, if it was, and I had to choose between something I know for sure, has a very, very poor success rate and in most cases does way more damage and trying something that we're not sure of, but at least, you know, it's it's not going to hurt me. Yeah. At least I would do, do is do both, although I wouldn't. I would recommend yeah. to anyone, you know, and that's another thing. They're all afraid that it's going to interact with their medicine. Yeah. So we've 
got to get that out there too, that it does not, I mean, like anesthesiologists are telling people they won't do surgery on them until they're cl clear of cannabis. Yeah. Why would you take away their immune system when you're about to cut them open? Yeah, because do you want to touch base on the endocannabinoid system, like your version of it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a two-hour two show lady. <laughs> The endocannabinoid system is basically everything. It really is. It starts with that. We just didn't know it. We we studied it in other countries. The information's been buried, but it's out there. It, our, our endocannabinoid system runs all the other systems in your body and maintains homeostasis. And without homeostasis, it, I, it doesn't matter what else you do. You know, yeah. and so if we don't feed it properly, and smoking does not feed it properly, neither does vaping, neither does eating a couple of gummies. You actually right. need, need to get it broke down and either juice it raw or, you know, eat it, make it into some type of an oil, get that directly into your system orally, or or what's the other way they call it? Sub with the suppositories there's a oh, term yeah, the suppository. right. yeah but it needs to go and even the topicals will work like a, a good friend of mine has been uh using it for skin cancer and she'll get the lesions to go away a new one might pop up but then when it does she just puts my oil on it and then or you know some of the cannabis oil on it and then puts her salve that she makes with cannabis oil on it yeah and it brings it all to the surface and comes off and it's which by by the way, she got this type of cancer, um, not to go into another whole situation or con, but they gave it to her with a hepatitis A vaccine. Really? Yeah, that's exactly, the, the doctor said it's right there in, in the form you signed, and it's a possibility, and that's, Wonderful. she was cancer free before she got that, and now she's got to deal with this. And since then, all the stuff that they've done to her, she's got five overlapping um, autoimmunes on top of dealing with this cancer. And this, this is the, you know, and, and that's another thing, you know, like Western, the Western medicine model, all of their drugs derive from plants, you know, but when you synthesize it and add all these chemicals to it, it's merely a Band-Aid. It actually just, you know, you go in with the symptom, they give you a diagnosis, they give you a Band-Aid to cover the symptoms that might have side effects, but for sure have long-term side effects. But when you use natural remedies, any remedies in herbalism, you know, any kind of natural remedies, including cannabis, you know, they actually heal through time. They, you know, they're not covering nothing. Uh, you know, sometimes they take a little quicker, you know, longer to work, but sometimes they work pretty quickly. Everyone's different, you know, and, and, you know, you have to find the combinations that are good for you once you get it, the core, but the cannabis THC is what you need in you right away. You need that THC oil to get in there, to stop the cells from spreading, start eating them and getting rid of those cells. And if you take chemo and radiation, which a lot of people choose to do the chemo and radiation, um, you can still do the cannabis oil and it will help you through it. Um, but it's going to have to first repair the damage from the keto and the radiation before it can do what it's supposed to do. So you're pushing yourself back in a life threatening situation, in my honest opinion, you know. You're, you're um, basically giving boosting your immune system at a time when the other medication is, while it's doing its job, it's killing your the rest of the good stuff. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's and it's scary when you're told you're sick and when you're told you have cancer or any any disease. Like you cling to that disease, but like don't identify as like I'm diabetic. I'm this like. You know, when I was told I have cancer, I didn't tell no one for five years. And if I did, I might not be here. It's like in my head, I just ignored it. Like I'm doing, I'm just getting strong. That's what I'm doing. And, you know, all I, I 
can say is I might have it right now, but like I'm way healthier than I was 13 years ago. So like to me, I'm good, you know? Um, so, you know, have faith in our bodies, man. We, you know, our bodies, our minds, everything are so much powerful than they want us to know. Like they can't make money on you helping yourself. No. And they can't. I mean, when you cut yourself with, you know, if you get a cut, I mean, watch, watch it heal. You know what I mean? I mean like your, your cut's going to heal by itself. That's what it's meant to do. And that happens all the way through if your body has what it needs. You know, well, let's start with that. When when they first discovered what uh, what THC and the endocannabinoid system, and when, when Dr. Raphael, I hope I'm I'm not disgracing and butchering his name, Meculum. Yeah, I, when he discovered all of this, he the first thing that he discovered was that it it starts here in the brain. It's a neuroprotectant. And then it goes from there. It so it, when I, I hear it's both focused on just any one thing like cancer. No, that homeostasis that means from your the top of your head to the tip of your toes, everything in your body. And I want people to understand that that if they t start taking it because they have chronic pain, but they're also a diabetic, they need to be really careful watching their sugar if they're on insulin or on something for that because what's going to happen is homeostasis is going to happen and then you're going to be over medicating yourself with the insulin you may no longer need right so it's really important to tell people you know about that too if they want to don't want to go off their meds if you're going right. to combine the two you've got to you've got to right. watch and use those tools that they give you the diagnostics and I think somebody's downstairs. <laughs> right. And then, you know, blood pressure pills, blood thinner. Right. Yeah. I mean, this um, goes across the board. Any health problem that you have, you're going to want to, to focus on that balance, watching that balance. Anytime you incorporate anything new, just like if the doctor gives you a new med and he says, watch for, well, it's not that I don't want people to ever think that the experience that they're having is because the cannabis gave them a cross reaction or or you know i want them to understand that it's it's helping their body to get right so they're not needing it and it's the over medication of the bad stuff yeah and, and so i just i wanted to put that out there while right. we're all talking about all this today because it's it's a whole package we have to be more aware for ourselves i didn't know any of this eight years ago yeah and look at me now i know <laughs> You know, we'll never know it all. Like, I mean, there's so much to learn. I mean, in the plant world and, and medicine making and um, how our bodies work, like, you know, but we can keep learning and talking to each other and collaborating. And, um, you know, really, that's how we got where we are today. And that's how we're going to move forward. Um, and hopefully, you know, the talking, I mean, look at what we, you know, how long have we called it FICO? You know, just because we didn't want to associate with the isopropyl or the naphtha. So, you know, just in having a simple conversation, you know, we've, we've thought, wow, we should just call this cannabis oil, you know. Um, Jinx Kitty's coming to say hi. Yeah, she has to say hello. Hi, yeah. Pink. Um, But, yeah. What else? Anything else you want to touch um I'm, I'm thinking here because like like oh just yeah basically i guess to wrap it all up is we have to keep doing this i appreciate so much that you started this platform and i know it's not always about cannabis but it's bringing in all those other things to the herbalists right and and just it's getting people talking and, right. and, and wanting to learn and, and so you know because we are, we're, we're literally sitting on the biggest stockpile of legal quality medication no one knows what to do with. And it's breaking my heart. And you know, you know, even at the end of life, you know, if you've ever had anyone at the end of life in the hospital and, or in hospice, you know, like hospice pretty much ends their life through morphine and Ativan by upping the dosage and if you've ever been with someone at that time, um, it's really a horrible time. The person being 
being, um, you know, passing on, he, you know, they're suffering in all kinds of ways, pain and emotional and, and fear, um, you know, before they transition and, um, the morphine just has them like on this high where they don't even know who the heck they are, or who you are. Um, and I've used cannabis oil myself and I know a lot of people have, you know, at the end of life, you know, through the transition for people and animals. And I mean, seriously, all hospice and the hospitals, one day they need to get to that point because what we do at end of life is so inhumane no. for humans. We're we're better with the animals, you know, as far as euthanizing them. Because humans literally have to sit there and suffer sometimes for months, at least days and weeks, you know. And um when they take the cannabis oil, it's nothing like that. They literally their pain goes away, their fear goes away, they can relax and enjoy those last few moments with their family because they know who they are. They're not morphined out or adamant out and they can cross over peacefully. Um, and I, you know, I've been in that predicament with a lot of people and animals and honestly, the transition over is so much more humane for people and animals. Like oh. I don't even and understand how the medical system lets people suffer the way that they do. It's, Look, it's I went missed it for myself with an Alzheimer's or dementia, whatever. How I don't, I never did know her exact diagnosis, but I know that when I found her again, um, we're gonna have to do a whole show on this woman. Yeah, we should really on, on Virginia dedicate it. But I'll just give you a short version now. Um, she, I knew her from one job I used to work at, and then I lost touch with her. And, happened to trip over around the corner several years later in end stage Alzheimer's. I mean, would, would they get to the point where they're not even functional and all they do is rock and moan? Yeah. And I gave her caregiver, uh, I said, here, you know what? See if this works for her. I just gave him some oil. A couple hours later, this man called me in tears of joy. You need to come over here right now. I haven't seen her like this in years. She was sitting back, relaxed. Kind of looking around, you know. She wasn't, she never did get back to her all the way there. Right. But she, she, he would let her sit up and she would get it, you know, and use her hands to feed herself again. And I mean, it, it was not, I won't say, she couldn't hold utensils and whatnot. But he gave her back abilities, lucidity. Like, you know, yeah. for, for a little night, he went off her leg too much. She would pull it back down. An Alzheimer's patient wouldn't know any different. You know, when they're in the end stage, they don't, you know. So I watched her live another four years of at least comfort yeah. until, until she did transition peacefully. But she was at the point where I, I'm surprised that she was able to come back as far as she did. And we all, we both know that would, the only difference was the cannabis oil in that case, because she was already on a really good diet. He had already taken her off the bad meds, and he was just trying to give her the best that he could, and the cannabis oil. So we, yeah, I would love to do one just on Alzheimer's with you, because yeah. I, I also saw it lightning quick. It gave my grandmother instant lucidity after hours of being out of element, and my family still denied it to her. And so yeah. that's one of the reasons that I do this now, because they just, it's not really their fault. They were raised in that generation that is embarrassed of it. And a really good woman that brought us all into this, our whole family into this world, had to suffer through a horrible death when I watched Virginia easily transition at the same time period. So yeah. I'm, I'm motivated. And that's, you know, I know you know, that's just the hardest part of being a caregiver is knowing you can help someone and watching them suffer you know because they don't want to they don't want to they don't want the help help or they don't want to put in the effort or they don't want to be open-minded or you well, know, scared. Scared. i had another best friend that went into a toledo hospital and they weren't legal there so she said i want i want to try it but i'm going to wait till i get home well she never made it home right but i tried for you know two years prior to that to get her to try it and 
the stigma and how her family felt about it and her friends kept her, you know, and then the doctor told her, I can guarantee you at least five more years. Can your friend guarantee you that with her weed? Right. Well, guess what? Less than a year later, she was gone because it had spread and they just didn't know it yet. And yeah, so they killed her. Right, and and we can almost assume that she'd probably be here today with cannabis oil, from what we've seen. Yeah, she you would. Know. She had already kicked cancer twice. What killed her was the sepsis they gave her from. Anyway, I'm not going to go. That's another yeah. show too. But <laughs> it, that yeah, I'm, I'm cool. motivated. And I'm I'm grateful for for you doing this and 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 cheering you on from the sidelines always because. I had someone just the other day tell me if I believed in this cause so much and it was actually real that I needed to put it out there on the media. I know. As if we haven't been trying to do that for decades. Yeah. You know, so this this right here with it being a trend now of everybody's on their phone looking, hopefully the right people will find it and at least help themselves. Right. And when you, you know, you know when you learn things, start talking to people. Start, you know, like, like that's the problem. We don't communicate at all anymore. Um, we need to talk about these things because um, if we don't, no one's going to be doing it. And you know, like we we have the we're supposed to keep the like, the next seven generations in mind as we live our lives. And a lot of people don't know that. But if you're a grandma like you are and I am, um, you know, we we're worried about our grand our grandbabies. You know? Hi, Peter. I hope to meet you someday. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> he just popped in. He's been commenting. She's my little, little sidekick. Um, no, we hate the FDA. Yeah. He said nothing approved by the FDA has been researched more than cannabis. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. Okay, I think we should should wrap it up then you want to wrap it up you got anything else you want to chime in today oh, sounds good i've probably gabbed your ear off and taken you way off topic enough today oh no i think it was a great great show and you know we kind of winged it today we don't have any bullet points or anything but we'll have you back because of course there's so many things and um you're in new york so today's cheryl's grandbaby's birthday and she's in new york having fun with him yes he's at school right now, so I took the time to, to set up here in this little makeshift spot that my kid had out here so I could smoke, because I can't smoke yeah. enough. <laughs> well, have some cake for me. Oh, yeah. we plan on it, girl. We plan on it. Cupcakes, too. Oh, oh yummy. That's my favorite part of birthdays. So, All right, ladies. Let me see if we have, have any... Um... Hi, Peter. How's it going? Hi, Dale. Thanks for joining. Cannabis and other plants and fungi should never be a taboo subject. That's right. Nothing should be taboo. And I mean, honestly, nothing's taboo on the real deal. We are talking about all of it. So if you have a passion and or if some topic you want to talk about, get a hold of me. We'll get you on here and we will talk it out and um, chime in. We'd love to hear from you. Join us here live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And next, we'll be talk talking cannabis with Uncle Peter O'Toole from Michigan Marijuana Seed Club. So stay tuned. Mwah. I love you. Love you, lady. Bye, Bye everybody. Thanks a lot. Hope yeah. somebody gets some help from this. Bye-bye. Have fun today. Plan on it, girl. Happy I don't know how to turn this thing out. <laughs>